This demo is to show you how um, API management can be a key to helping you really modernize and make your apps cloud native. So on this slide, you see a typical pass where we're coming from the left. Um, we have our servers hosting our front end and our API layer. We have a server hosting the SQL data band, uh, database backend. And now we want to do away with it towards the right here and do a really modern implementation where we'll have our front end website hosted on an app service on its own compute instance that is scalable and then we'll have our api layers hosted behind an api management on serverless azure functions what's off the bat uh the the big big benefits here are number one I have different scaling engines for different parts of my app. So let's say my front end has pretty steady state, but my back ends uh, really explode in traffic. Uh, let's say I, I'm I'm a restaurant. I take in orders uh, uh, at lunchtime, and at lunchtime it's really really it's crunch time for my APIs. These can then scale individually, independently of my website uh, for the front end, for example. Second uh, key benefit here is that I can do uh, lifecycle management independently of each of the for each of part of my app. So let's say my uh, the products API has an update that I need to push. I can just update this function app and not the front end or the users API. And I can version these individually. I can do canary uh, testing where I send a subset of the traffic to this endpoint over time. Um, individually from the rest of the app. And then the third big, big uh, benefits that we see a lot of clients uh, starting to leverage is I can make my application polyglot. So have it written in different frameworks and languages. For example, my website might be React Native, my front end, and then I have APIs. I have my older ones that are in, um, I don't know, C Sharp or, or JavaScript. And then I have new ones that are AI infused and really cool from my college graduates. Um, they're written in Python, for example. And now each of the team can write in their own language and um, and work at their own pace on each of these. So really key benefits here from the get go. Let's have a look at the API management service because that service is really going to help you with the lifecycle of your APIs. So to be able to not only version your APIs, but also to manage your stakeholder access to your APIs. Um, very often we see our clients, they have a team that builds out APIs and then different parts of the business will want to use them. Uh, maybe it's it's access to your pricing engine or to your inventory management system. Um, and you've built really good APIs in front of them. Um, so you hide the clunky ERP systems maybe. Um, but now you want to make sure that they get access, that it's controlled access, and also you want to add policies to throttling. So you don't want some a developer in, in, in strategic purchasing writing uh, an unhealthy uh, application, and then he calls your API so often that your ERP system is, is, uh, is backed up all the way. So that's things that you'll be able to do with the API um, management here. There are uh, APIs. We'll onboard a couple in a minute. And then you can group your APIs into products, and then you have subscriptions. That's where you give access to products. And this way, when somebody, an external or internal stakeholder, wants to have access, you can direct them to uh, a flow um, that you can build yourself where they ask, hey, I, I want to have access to these APIs. And then you can document, OK, this is how you interact with these APIs, and your personal access key is going to be this and that. And with that personal access key, you could even go as far as um, having custom chargeback um, be done for them. So let's look at my APIs. I have here already onboarded my modern products API and my modern user API. So this one gets product and this one gets users. Just to show you how easy it is to onboard a new API, um, this is the experience you would get. You can bring in your definition files over here that contain everything. This is what you would do if you had your backend hosted in um, maybe on premise or or in AWS. If you have them already on Azure, it's even easier. You could go here, say I want to onboard a function app. Um, look for the function apps that you have. Modern products API, add it, select. And then you can give it a display name, a name and then a URL suffix. So for example, here we'll do API slash uh, product. 
And then this will be the endpoints that you hit to get to that. And in the background, it's a function app. Um, so we are hiding the fact that it's a function app. And then the other beauty is obviously you can bring in your custom domain. So you could make this uh, API dot uh, McDonald's.com and then slash um, products, for example. All right, so we've onboarded these. And then once you've onboarded them, you can start and test them. So here in this blade, we see because it's a function app, I have two methods. I have get users and post users. And if we do, let's say get user, let's run a test where we are going to just send a request to API users get user, send request. And then I get a 200 OK. Um, modern user API, and then the payload here is users, username, etc. And so I get the payload here. So this is this is a way to test here um, directly in the portal. You could do all of this obviously from from Postman, a very common tool. I do want to show so um, a couple of things where you can add policies. So the concept is you have your front end, you have your back end. Our back end here is an HTTPS endpoint um, tied to a function app. And then in my inbound processing, I can add uh, policy rules. So I can filter by the inbound IP address so that I restrict who can call my APIs. I can do call rate limits. So uh, as I said, you don't want somebody to be able to call you so often that your SQL backend gets gets throttled or, or, or gets hit too many times. You could say with, with any given uh, API key, I'm only allowed to call 100 times per minute, for example. Uh, when you do, for example, just for testing, you can send a mock response. So you could build the APIs ahead of actually the backend um, and, and have people test the APIs even without the backend. Um, there's quite a bit that you can do. You can obviously also on the on the return, this is something that I would recommend on the return policy, uh, also hide where the policy, where the where the response is uh, coming from, for example, so that people can't from the payload figure out, oh, this is a SQL backend or something like this. All right, so this was API management. A last tiny a demo I wanted to show is, um, let's say you need to extend it with um, a mail service or something else. There is also Logic Apps. Logic Apps is a great way to build in low code, no code, a very, very quick um, quick um, API. So here I have a logic app that I've created. It's called Contact Senders. Um, and if we look at how it looks, I have again an HTTP trigger. The HTTP trigger expects uh, a string with a contact in it. And then when it gets hit, I send an email where I take from the trigger body the field contact. And, and then some static text here, and I send it to Nagendra. And so if I hit this and run it, let's do it from here. I'm going to onboard it real quick. So this is a logic app. I'm going to browse for it, contact. All right, the suffix is going to be API slash contact, create. And then we're going to test it right away. Let's do a test. Post contact is going to be uh, Jerome. I'm sending this 200 to accept it. If I come over to my logic app here, um, what logic app comes with the entire monitoring built in, which is really nice, and I can trace back individual runs. And again, this is a scaling engine that will be uh, very uh, that will be able to grow. I have here contact Jerome, and then I did send an email. And if I go to my mailbox, um, because I have it sent it under my name, this is the wrong mailbox, I will be able to see um, under my sent, sent items, Jerome wants you to reach out for help. So we've just onboarded in less than five seconds an API that will be able to do, um, to, to do uh, an email service uh, with my application. So really easy way to extend your, your app. So this was a quick demo of the API management and how it helps um, manage and 
and uh, give access to our different microservices implemented on Azure Serverless.